Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, what I hope to be is a quick video. What we're doing today is taking an iMac. Nope. What we're doing today is taking a Mac Mini G4, and we're going to overclock it to the maximum speed that this board allows. So, I have a Mac Mini here in pieces, and I had to completely tear this down and clean it because it was absolutely disgusting. Now, I know it works. I fired it up on a uh, live stream about a week or two, three ago, where I was uh, unboxing this box of goodies, and this Mac Mini came out of that. It was disgusting, so I had to tear it down, clean it up, and repaste it. And I figured since I have it disassembled, I'm going to overclock it. So if you don't feel like taking your Mac Mini G4 apart completely, as long as you can get the board out, you're good. Because everything we need is on the back side of the board. So you don't have to take off the heatsink, the RAM. As long as you can get the board out, you can leave whatever's on there on there. All right? Only disassemble it as far as you need to take the board out. So with that out of the way, let me show you where we can find some instructions. And I'm recording all this in StreamYard. Because I'm lazy. So let's see if I can pull this off. We are going to share a window. There we go. And you're going to go to automat.com. Once you're there, scroll down a little, and in the sidebar, you'll find PowerPC Overclocking Station. On that page, select the Mac you want to overclock from the list, in this case, a Mac Mini G4. And there it is. All the instructions right there. So, StreamYard has a new feature where it now allows for two cameras. So we're going to test that. Let me put my keyboard aside, grab the microscope. And see if we can pull this off. All right, not exactly what I had in mind, but here we go. What we're looking for on the board is a small cluster of resistors right here. There they are in the picture, and here they are on camera. Now, in the current configuration, and I'll go back to the main page, in the current configuration, as you can see here, well, you can't really see, because StreamYard is not exactly doing what I want it to do. So let's do this for a second. In the current configuration, right here, 1.42 gigahertz. I'm going to skip the 1.5 and go straight to 1.8. So all we have to do is take this top jumper here and get rid of it. And then this board should be configured to 1.58 gigahertz. So let's get it done. Now I'm going to try and do this without a hot air gun. Because I really am trying to make this video as quick as humanly possible. Because I do not feel good right now. So let's see if I can make this happen. With my iron. I might have to add some solder to this. He is not going to let me do that. So much for quick and easy. See if it'll go now. There we go. Let's 
put that aside for a second. Clean up those pads. Now, just so you don't lose the resistor in case uh, the overclock doesn't work or you want to undo it later on. I suggest you just stick it to one of the pads where it's out of the way. Like right there. So grab a little bit of solder. Grab the resistor. And just tack it on there. Doesn't even to, it doesn't even have to be straight. Just tack it on there, push down on it, make sure it's flat to the board, and you're good to go. Clean up a little bit. And be careful if you're gonna use a Q-tip on this. So that resistor is only tacked on with one with one pin. So be careful your Q-tip doesn't get stuck on it because you might rip that pad off. All right. Now we don't have to worry about any flux cleanup or anything like that because we didn't use any. And there it is. According to the jumpers, this should now be a 1.58 gigahertz. So let me start the fun task of uh, reassembling this uh, Mac Mini. And then we'll give it a test. Voila, one assembled Mac Mini. So now I have to hook this up to a scaler so you can actually see if it works or not. Let me go and arrange that if I can. <laughs> I do not have a scaler available that supports uh, whatever that connection is. But I do have a tiny display here. So. Good sign, I hope. Holy crap! While this boots up, I'm going to look for a mouse. I don't remember which operating system I put on here during the live stream. It doesn't really matter. As long as it shows us the about this Mac info. drive sounds like it's uh, on its way out but we don't mind right now there we go seven can I zoom in on that yeah 750 megahertz power PC g4 this is a known issue when you overclock it past a certain speed it doesn't really 
recognize what's going on in there and it'll show 750 megahertz there are some changes you can do uh, to correct this it, it basically pulls this information from a table so you just add the right speed with the right cpu type to that table and you're good to go but if you see 750 megahertz you're running at 1.58 so there it is Has it been erased yet? I don't even know. No, probably not. All right. I guess I'm going to erase this and put a fresh operating system on there. But this is the quick video I wanted to put out using the guide on my website. A soldering iron, some tweezers. You can uh, take this all the way up to 1.58 gigahertz. And I meant to do this for the PowerPC challenge, but I've been busy, I've been sick, I had work. Then, you know, before you know it, it's one month later. But I still wanted to get this out there for those that are crazy enough to do the PowerPC challenge on a G4 Mac Mini. You can get some extra speed out of it and enjoy the challenge a little bit faster. So that's all for me this time. Have a good one, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.